Hi, Mermaid Junkies. Um, I told you last week that I was going to do a video about friendships. And um, I was actually busy getting married, so <laughs> I didn't actually get that video out. But I wanted to just talk a few minutes about friendships. Um, because the situation happened to me again, and I kept thinking, you know how like the universe keeps giving you things that... Um, that are there to serve you in a sense, like the contrast to serve you so that you can understand where you are in your life and and um, what you need to learn, maybe. Um, so anyway, I had gotten this call from a friend and it seems like this is the one friend, you know, you, I don't know if you have this, but you have that one friend that's like you kind of give them the pass because you've maybe known them your whole life or... Um, yeah, I mean, you have a lot of history with them, and it's kind of like you put them on the shelf separately than other friends that maybe you would be more prone to let go or um, just let them walk out of your life and it wouldn't be a big deal. But, you know, we get very, very um, attached and habitual with our lives, and so if you have friends that you've had for since college or since you were a child or whatever, it's a little bit more difficult to... Um, to relinquish those friendships and um, anyway and so I was reminded of like this particular friend that I mean I've known her my entire life I mean since since we were children and it just seems like every time I was always the friend doing the reciprocation you know like I would always have to be the one to call and reach out to her or it was it was like a fighting battle all of the time and so I, I would say, oh, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm over this. I'm getting tired of this. Why does she treat me this way? And that kind of thing. And um, and so, you know, once again, I would let, you know, six months go by. And then I would be like, oh, I miss her, you know, or whatever. I want to see how she's doing and da-da-da. And when I was going through my divorce with Mitch, and I guess that's why I'm a little bit more reserved with my friendships and stuff is because... Um, you know, some people might have friendships for their entire lives and they've had them since they were young and they've been wonderful and healthy and everything. But I've found that if you're not completely authentic with your friends and you say, oh, that's my best friend, but you can't be like completely and utterly open with that person, like really, really your true self and you feel that there's this sense of unconditional love with that particular friend, then to me, it's like, it's just them being on this list of going, oh, they're my friend and it's cool and everything. Because I'm like, no, that doesn't make for real friendships. That's not really a real friendship if there's conditions on the friendship. Do you know what I mean? And so, yeah, you might, I mean, some people might look at me and think, you know, Raquel doesn't have any friends or, um, I know I've been told that before that I can't keep friends. But here's the thing, you guys, the reason that, that I don't necessarily, it may have seemed in the past that I didn't keep friends. The reason for that is because, for one thing, I had trust issues. You know, I mean, anybody that goes through an abusive childhood or whatever tends to have probably some form of trust issues with people. Even your closest and closest, you're like, oh, they're my best friend, you know. But you still may have that little, you know, like a 2% reluctancy in your friendship to like, give them everything, you're everything to you, you know, I mean, you're everything to them, and so I think that that's pretty normal, and um, so anyway, like I said, when I was going through my divorce with Mitch, I didn't want to have any influence from people from the outside, because I, I felt like throughout my entire life, I had always really leaned on other people and friends for that sense of validation. Like, I'm feeling this. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you want that person to get on your side and like, I totally understand what you're saying, Raquel. I totally get it. And you're right. And he's wrong and whatever. And so this time when I was going through the divorce and stuff, I did, because I was transitioning as well, as far as, <laughs> that kind of sounds funny, but when I was having this like transformation for myself through my own journey, I really wanted it to be about Raquel. I needed to know that like, I was the one thinking these thoughts. I didn't want to have any influence from anyone, my parents, my husband, my children, church pe people, um, pastors, bishops, um, 
professionals, you know, I mean, everyone means well in a sense, but it was like, you know what, it's so important. And if there's anything that I've learned that I would love to share with you is that it's okay to go go within and, and just listen to your own spirit, your own inner guidance system, because your own inner guidance system is the only true path that you should worry about following because, or not worry about following, but, but following. Because um, that's what confuses people so much is that they make these decisions in life and depending on, you know, do I, do I want a divorce match? Do I really, you know, is this really what Raquel wants? Or is this what other people are saying? Oh, I would totally get, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's so important that when you're going through these transformations in your life, that you kind of, in a sense, not be rude about it or anything like that, but it's so important for you just to kind of go into yourself and just only listen to your own inner guidance system because that's basically God or source is your inner guidance system is telling you what you need to do. And so you can never go wrong if you listen to your own inner guidance system. And, you know, I've had a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, friendships, you know, why do you, you know, um, there, there's like a lot of stuff on the internet too. I wanted to go about, you know, the friendship thing because I was talking about my old friend and, and how I finally just said, you know, it's th that friendship's no longer serving me and I'm just, you know, it's, it's ready to give it up. You know, I'm ready to give it up and let, and just let it go. And, and, um, what happened was it's like, basically the universe doesn't give you anything that you're not inviting in. So you can say, well, I have this one friend and she's a bitch. You know what I mean? Like, um, no one can deal with her. And the only friend she has is me and whatever. And it's like, okay, so if you have a friend like that, like, for instance, I have a friend like that that is, like, really not there for me ever. Like, <laughs> she just has never been there for me. Like, I would always felt like I was always the one that was giving in the friendship. Do you ever have that? Like, one's always giving in the friendship, and then you're sitting there like, I mean, okay, I don't need you to validate me in life, but it would be nice to to um to have someone just to you know go and have a Starbucks coffee with or something and it's like but you're never available you're only available for these other people and you know what i realized it's like people say that oh well you know um you attract what you're putting out and so i think with that particular friendship i was attracting that type of behavior from that friend because there's a part, there was a part of me, I feel like, I'm really going deep here, you guys, but there was a part of me that was willing to accept the way that she treated me. And not that I have to feel like a victim or anything, like she treated me terrible, because that she didn't. She just didn't really treat me anyway. Um, it was just, I wasn't important to her, and that's okay. So the, So what it was showing me is the universe was showing me that there was a portion of my spirit that I wasn't loving condition, you know, um, unconditionally. Like I was being, I was willing to accept that behavior of her not treating me with respect. And so there was a portion of me, I guess, inside that I wasn't having respect for Raquel. Like, you know, caring more about my own needs than what other people cared about my needs. Does that make sense? Like, I think, I think it makes sense because you guys are like freaking geniuses, right? Um, but anyway, it's kind of like, you know, people say, oh, why do you have, you know, certain friends or whatever? Well, when we have certain friends in our lives and it's like their, their behavior is like crapola or they, um, <laughs> they're idiots or whatever. It's like, you know what? The universe hears that. And so when you, when you have friends like that, um, that means that you might be saying all of the right things, but what you're feeling, your emotions are telling you is something totally different because the universe does not hear what you're saying. The, the universe only hears what you really mean intentionally, deep down. And so the universe is gonna give you that exact thing that you're attracting in that friend. And I think that it's kind of a self-awareness thing because a lot of times for, my, for me and my journey, you want to blame that other person like this has really nothing to do with me she's just a psycho when when actually 
you're attracting that because I mean in the universe is like RSVPing all over the freaking place so a really great place to be in in your life for for friendships is not to need a friendship for validation and not to need a friendship to um, sort of like for you to be independent of needing that validation from anyone anyone it's a very very healthy place to be and so I don't know if this served you or not but I just was thinking about these different things and stuff and it's like um I think a lot of times people want to give excuses for like oh well I have a friend that's this way or this way and this really has nothing to do with me she's just that type of friend or whatever but you know what the universe is always giving you what you are feeling emotionally so just remember that there's two sides to the stick you know it there's wanted and unwanted and if you pick up the unwanted um, you're a lot of times going to get the wanted because <laughs> the universe does not understand that, you know? Um, anyway, that was just my thought. And you can tell I just woke up because I have like a scruffy voice, but, um, I'm back in the workout room again, trying to, um, start patching up the concrete and stuff. I ripped all the carpet out and it looks great and I've sanded it down. Um, and so I think I'm going to start... Um, caulking holes and stuff in the... Do you even want to hear this? I'm just rambling to you anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that <clears throat> that was a piece of information that maybe helped you and served you today. And that if you have one of those friends that you think, you know what? This is ridiculous. Just remember, you might need to start going, you know what? This friendship really does not serve me any longer. And it's not like, you know, I made this big, you know, thing to the universe because don't, don't ever do that. Like, I'm leaving this friendship because guess what you're going to get? More of that shit coming back to you because the universe is like, <laughs> the universe will give you exactly what you want or don't want. That's how it works. So just don't draw your attention to that kind of thing. So I just was like, just let that friend go. She probably doesn't even know I'm not friends with her anymore. And that's fine and wonderful, but I'm just going to let it subside, you know, on its own. It'll, it'll work itself out. And um, I wish her the best. And you, and you do that. You wish them the best, but you just don't make any efforts anymore. And you realize who the people in your life really are. And a lot of times it could be that those people are envious of you. You know, I really think that I've really recognized that like, oh, th and that's not an egotistical thing for me to say. It's just like when people are happy, there's so many people that's like, oh, I'm so happy for you, Raquel. Deep down, they're not really feeling that though. You know what they're feeling? I can't wait till something horrible happens to her. Oh my God, this relationship's going to be down the tubes in six months. Oh, that, 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 that. Because I remember when like um, me, when, when I was married to Mitch and stuff, it was like, I knew people secretly were just waiting like, oh, she doesn't have a fairy tale marriage. I can't wait till she ends up getting a divorce. And it's like this internal self-hatred they have about themselves. And it's like, they're saying all the right things like, oh, congratulations on your new love. I'm so happy for you and Jeffrey. When deep down, it's like, they're totally pissed that they don't have it. And it's like, you can, you can sense those. I mean, I'm very intuitive, not only because I'm a Pisces, but I'm just very empathic and I can sense stuff like that and I can't tell you how many people that it's like oh wow okay so I saw you go on that person's page and like dog cussed me but you just said how much you were so happy for Jeffrey and I that we we found each other and all that so be very you know when you have a gut instinct about something or someone and you feel like there's just something uneasy about that or that just doesn't feel authentic Listen to your gut because that's your own inner guidance system protecting you and, and taking care of you and helping you to remember that you're most important and that what you feel and what matters to you is most important. Not what other people, you know, I mean, it's wonderful for people to think how great it is that Jeffrey and I found each other, but you know what? If you don't think that, I could give a rat's ass what people think about me. I really do not care. You know, I think it's wonderful and I appreciate it, but it's not what it's not um, keeping me up at night if someone doesn't like me or someone has an issue with me or anything like that. Like I do not care. And I think when you can get to that independent sense of of um, self confidence, 
because you love yourself and you love yourself more than you care about and love what other people think about you. It's a very, very healthy, independent way of being. And, um, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I, and I think that that's what most people really truly want to feel about themselves. You know, I keep tapping that because it's like people notifications and stuff. Sorry. But, um, it's a really healthy, healthy way to be. And, I, like I said, I hope this served you. I love you very much. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And as always, I'm yours until my next swim. Ciao.